Hello everyone and thanks for joining me as I show you how I made this glacier. I've had loads of requests to make a snow scene, so here I am. Whether this was what you all had in mind I don't know, but I thought it was a good idea. I thought it would be quite easy, I was wrong. There's nowhere to hide with ice. Anyway, let's crack on, ho ho. As usual, the base was a board of extruded polystyrene, cut down to a square 30cm by 30cm. And I built up the body of the glacier using extra pieces of extruded foam stuck together with the Hotwire Foam Factory's Foam Fusion. This stuff is an absolute delight to use, it's not messy at all, and it bonds foam like pretty much nothing else. Plus, if it's applied in thin layers, which is all you really need, it can be cut with hot wire tools. You'll notice that some of the board I'm using here is blue. That's because it's old stock from the company that I use. They've since switched to black foam. The colour being the only difference between the foams. To secure the pieces in place while the glue dried, I put in some cocktail sticks and press these down through the foam using the flat side of a knife. Be very careful. For the front edge of the glacier I used Woodland Scenics rock moulds with Plaster of Paris. I mixed the plaster to a relatively thin consistency, about the thickness of double cream. This just meant that the plaster didn't start going off before it had a chance to fill all the rock moulds. Some people say to wet the rock moulds with water before you pour the plaster. I've never bothered with this. The plaster always comes out easily enough. Some casts break, but that's okay. I never actually use the full rock cast anyway. And while the plaster was drying, I used Sculptor Mould to build up the form of the glacier. There's no exact science to mixing Sculptor Mould. Just add as much as you feel you'll need. And then add enough water to be able to mix it into a stiffish kind of paste. It's cheaper to add extra water than extra Sculptor Mould to achieve the thickness that you want. So my advice is add the water in bits at a time. And then I just started spreading it directly over the surface of the foam. With Sculpt Mould you get about 20 minutes to half an hour depending on the humidity of where you're doing your modelling. After which time my rock moulds were ready. It's a good idea to have several rock moulds so that you can avoid repeating patterns along the cliff face, or in this case, the glacier edge. I applied more sculpt mould across the front of the glacier so that I could stick the rock moulds onto the surface. It's just a case of pressing them into the sculpt mould and fitting them together a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. And then I blended them together with more sculpt mould and continued building up the structure of the glacier. At this point I realised I wanted to change the shape of the glacier slightly and all this took was a very sharp knife to cut away at the foam. The slope was blended in with yet more sculptor mould. and I pressed in a few pieces of broken rock mould casting to give the impression of the glacier crumbling away. These were just blended in with a scrap of foam. 
and then I went over the entire surface of the sculpt mould and blended it in with wet fingers. Glaciers are even more dramatic when bits drop off them, so I decided to model a piece of ice carving off the front of the glacier. For this I used a suitable plaster rock casting and just whittled it down to size using a sharp knife, making sure to texturise the shaved areas of the plaster. And when I was happy with the size and shape of the shearing ice piece, I added some sculpt mould at the base and pressed the piece into place at an angle away from the face of the glacier. And a lolly stick came in handy to blend in the sculpt mould behind the piece. Because the resin I'd be using for the water gets very hot while it's curing, I decided to coat the foam using slightly diluted Decorator's acrylic corking. Together with the paint that I'd be applying over the surface, this would form an impregnable seal protecting the foam. I wasn't really worried about brush marks, because there'd be so many layers of stuff on top of this, including a coating of white gesso. I decided to go over the entire model with this to give me a completely even base coat. Paint takes differently over different surfaces. For instance, where you have plaster of Paris and sculptor mould, you'll often find paint washes reacting very differently. The gesso has a very fine keyed surface texture, allowing the paint to be applied evenly. And the paints I used for the glacier ice were a mid blue, a sea spray green and a lagoon green. I first mixed up the lagoon green with a bit of the sea spray green. And made a very dilute wash. Which I brushed over the surface of the ice. Going a bit heavier into the cracks to accentuate them and then lightly over the flatter areas. I soaked up any pools using an old scrap of newspaper and then added a bit of the mid blue to the mix to give me a slightly darker tone to further give the impression of depth in the cracks in the ice. This can look fairly dramatic at first, but as the paint dries it gets considerably lighter. And then I carefully brushed over some white paint using a flat headed brush, highlighting all the edges and toning down the blue. However, I made sure not to go over the area behind the falling chunk of ice with the white. The first layer of snow on top of the glacier was made using Vallejo snow texture paint. This is a fairly coarse grained acrylic and you can pile it up reasonably nicely. Working it at the edges to give the impression of thick lying snow. However, because of the coarse grained nature of the paste, I also used some snow flock by Woodland Scenics while the paste was still wet. At this point, I applied the first base coat of the water and I was going with a blue colour at first. But later I changed my mind, however, by that point I'd already applied this layer and it would have looked odd in the video had I left it out. I used a wash of sea spray green under the glacier to lend the water the appearance of depth. And blended this into the blue using a wet on wet technique, much similar to Bob Ross. <laughs> 
I was already realizing that the blue was far too bright, so I put on some Payne's Gray, which is a kind of blackish blue gray acrylic paint. And then it was time to return to the glacier. Now as a glacier slides slowly downhill, it gathers all sorts of rubble and dirt in it. If you ever look at a photo of a glacier edge, you'll often see great lines of dirt. And to simulate this, I just mixed up a wash of burnt umber. And here's where I decided that the base was still too blue. So I went in with some more Payne's Grey and a mossy green actually called jungle green. I did however want it to get a little bit more blue towards the ice so I just blended in a bit of mid blue. And this also helped to tone down the greenness of the water. And at last I had a colour I was happy with. But of course all my nice neat blending from before was ruined now, so I had to go back in with the sea spray. I think all this just shows that it's always okay to make changes as you go along. For the glacier debris I again turned to my rock moulds, sanding the bottom of the castings flat and then breaking them up into pieces, chipping off small bits with a sharp knife, and then I stuck the bigger bits down with some Mod Podge mat. I had a kind of flow in mind, but really there's no wrong way to go about this. And I gave them a quick wash with my ice blue from the glacier, before pointlessly, as it turned out, going around the edges with a bit of white to lend it the impression of depth. I say pointless because I didn't really realise at the time how this would all be covered over. And do you remember how I said I was happy with the colour before? Well, I wasn't. I changed my mind and I went back to the green. And now the bigger bits of debris were down, it was time to pour the resin. And first this meant creating a dam using masking tape. And I applied a bead of white glue along the bottom edge to seal it. And then before preparing the resin, I took some of the smaller debris pieces and gave them a wash with the ice blue as well. Because I realised I'd need to give them a chance to dry before putting them in the wet resin, which is what I planned to do. And the resin I used was water clear epoxy resin from CFS. This gets mixed in equal parts, one resin, one hardener, and these are actually old cups that I've washed out with isopropyl alcohol. The two parts of the resin then get mixed thoroughly together, slowly so as not to introduce too many bubbles. and I tinted mine with a bit of green acrylic. Just a few dots at a time, you can always add more. As I did here until I was happy. And then it was a case of pouring the resin very carefully. 
and it's important to make sure that your work surface is completely level so that the resin pours evenly or rather that you don't end up with a shallow and a deep end. You don't get too many glaciers in swimming pools after all. The resin usually finds its way into all the little areas of the model, but you can push it where you want with a lolly stick. A soldering torch is a good tool for bursting the bubbles. You just have to go very carefully, pass it lightly over the surface, not getting too close and not remaining in one spot for too long, and watch out for setting the masking tape on fire. In the meantime my small debris had dried, so it was time to start dropping that into the resin, in among the bigger boulders, going slowly to build up the look you're after. I mean, you don't have to be too careful, this is a natural scene. And this is a glacier that's breaking up. And it wouldn't do that too neatly. But it's always best to take your time where resin's involved. It can be hard to correct things later. To kind of blend the rocks in together a bit more I used some Woodland Scenic Snow Flock and I was quite pleased with how it all turned out. I ended up going over some of the bigger boulders again with a dry brushing of white and a very light wash of burnt umber. And then it was time to remove the masking tape, always one of my favourite bits. And the flashing at the edge of the resin could be removed with a very sharp knife. To give the water an icy look, I mixed up some Liquitex glazing medium. With a small amount of white. and brushed this sparingly over the surface. Now it goes on fairly white, but it dries opaque. Nevertheless, I didn't want to go too thick with it. And I blended it in with a bit of untinted glazing medium. Kind of swirling the two into each other because I didn't want to end up with any overdefined edges. And then it was time to make splashes where my ice was falling into the lake. And for this I used Sudol Crystal Clear Fix All Polymer mixed with some Vallejo Snow Paste. and thinned with just a touch of isopropyl alcohol. It's quite fiddly to apply this. It likes sticking to your spatula, so you might have to use two. But once it's down, it's quite easy to poke and prod about into nice splashy shapes. Just keep teasing it out until you're happy. To add a sense of translucency to the splash, I mixed a bit of my ice blue wash into the remaining mixture in the cup and then daubed this on sparingly. And then the final touch was to add very finely teased out bits of polyfiber which can drive you a bit crazy as it sticks to your fingers. And then a sprinkling of Woodland Scenics Snow Flock. <laughs> 
I said at the beginning that I thought this would be easy. It turned out anything but. Just because there are no trees, no vegetation, doesn't mean that there isn't going to be a hell of a lot of detail that is going to have to stand up to close scrutiny. But I have to say I was very pleased with how that splash turned out. In fact, I was very pleased with how the whole model turned out. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting my channel. It's been exciting to see how fast it's been growing. It makes me very happy to know that it's inspiring people to get creative. So thanks for all your likes, shares and comments. I'll see you next time. Cheers!